As the sun sets over developing countries, more than a billion people are either plunged into darkness or forced to rely on toxic and polluting light sources, such as kerosene lamps. Of course, clean alternative energy sources are out there, but switching over to them has been slow going until now. I'm Robin Forrestier-Walker and I'm in Kenya, where market forces are powering a solar revolution. Over 80% of Kenya's 40 million inhabitants use kerosene, candles and torches as their main sources of light, which creates as much carbon dioxide as nearly 600,000 cars. This is Naivasha in Kenya's Rift Valley, and there's limited electricity here at night, but in villages nearby there's no power at all. Well, I've come to meet Gorav, who's a new class of green entrepreneur. How are you doing, Gaurav? Oh, and Sarah, you're his local business partner. Yeah, true. Where are we going this evening? I'm going to take you to a small family. Then you'll see how they cope with life without electricity. Okay, okay. let's go. All right. Millions of children like Ruth do their homework by the light of a kerosene lamp inhaling fumes that could lead to respiratory illnesses. Hi, Gaurav. What's it like having uh, to use kerosene every evening? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. She has to go to the shops every day to purchase the kerosene, so mm -hmm. it's quite a bad experience for her. Millions of people using at least one liter of kerosene per week and buying diesel batteries for the radios, which are getting tossed on the ground or in the water, and of course buying candles and inhaling all of that. Most farmers in, that we've met, at least in Kenya, are earning about two dollars a day or three dollars a day and spending maybe a quarter of that income on kerosene. Today, Sarah has come to a tea plantation to drum up interest in a new solar lighting system called Brightbox, designed by Gaurav. Solar energy, this solar, we can use it as a solar, it is 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 a solar, solar, it is a 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 solar, it is the bright box costs $80, but Sarah and her colleague have arranged a deal so farm workers can pay monthly through their wages. In its first six months on the Kenyan market, a network of entrepreneurs have sold 5,000 bright boxes. Lucia has decided to take advantage of the payroll scheme to buy a bright box, so Gaurav and I head back to her home to help install it. Hi. Lucia, hi. Gaurav uh, has brought you the Bright Box. The Bright Box is essentially a solar powered battery that can power up to four bulbs at once, plus charge several phones and a radio. You actually designed this box yourself, then? That's right, yeah. Ours is one of the only products that uses an open source approach to hardware design. The light bulbs are compatible with any 12 volt DC bulb. Uh, the battery is compatible with any motorbike battery, which is very commonly available in all the local markets here. Wow. So that's, that's your light. And then there was light. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Make sure it's very tight. The system will pay for itself in savings from kerosene and phone charging in a few months. And afterwards, householders have free light for years to come. I mean, it, it really couldn't be simpler, actually. <laughs> Done it. I mean, it takes two minutes. Lucia can just about afford a solar home system, but even the poorest households can buy a simple solar lantern for as little as ten dollars. Hey presto, an outside light. Yeah. What would you like to do? To read, to write the notes, and to do any work in the house. 
Are you going to help your mama? Yes. Seven million Africans now use high-quality solar lighting, with sales doubling every year and 150 products now available. We're in the bustling town of Nakuru, where it's a big-sized town, so there's quite a lot of items on the market. And, uh, Gaurav, you've come to show me what's out there. Right, this is uh, Boto Solar. It's one of our best resellers here in Kenya. They sell a range of solar energy products. We are doing the solar panels and the solar kits. Sometimes we have the generators. The solar is increasing instead of decreasing, it's increasing. Countries like Kenya seem set to leapfrog expensive infrastructure when it comes to lighting and go straight to cleaner off-grid alternatives. Even in the, in the urban areas they are coming for solar panels and for emergency kit for lights. In case the electricity goes down, they like the kit. We've seen how solar is brightening people's homes. Now we've come to Lake Victoria to see its positive impact on an age-old livelihood. I've come to meet Oscar Aminde, who's the technical manager of a series of facilities known as WeHubs. Oscar, hi, how are you doing? Welcome, Robin. Robin. Hi. Oscar, tell us, what is the WeHub? The WeHub stands for Water Energy Education Machine Technology Centre for the local community. This is 15 kilowatt peak of solar power. It gives us a possibility of charge some thousands of products. Instead of selling small solar panels, this hub uses its large array to power an internet cafe, a phone charging service, water purification, and a range of solar lanterns and battery packs that it leases out. And here are your, your new batteries. These are the really lightweight ones that you yes. can sort of juggle with. They're really amazing, actually, how light they are. Half of Oscar's customers are the area's night fishermen who hire the battery packs to power floating solar lights. Uh, actually, who are these guys coming in now? Uh, these, are, these are mostly fishermen. These are fishermen. You can see they're carrying several systems. Right. It's only one system because the boat normally has five of these systems or more. OK. Depending. I see they bought a bunch of batteries back. Yes. Hello. Yes. I've come for recharge. I yes. mean, because you, you're not selling this product. Uh, it's a lease agreement. Mm. Uh, they give us a deposit, and uh, what they only have to do is to get energy out of it, uh, pay for a recharge, and that recharge get, get us for the energy need and repairs. Fishing teams pay $4 to hire five fully charged batteries that last throughout the night, around half the cost of using kerosene. Thousands of boats go out on Lake Victoria every night to catch freshwater sardines. Traditionally, they use kerosene lamps to attract the fish, which leak into the lake and add to its pollution. So this is the existing, this is the old system. Yes. This is what actually most people are still using on the lake, isn't it? Yes. What can go wrong with this? Uh, one of them is the wick. Yeah. Uh, it could burst. Okay. There's so much water and this glass is hot. Uh, when it drops on it, it's also crushed. It. Basically, this is the 21st century. This is uh, this is from another time. Are people clamouring to get on board? I mean, the fishermen say, "Where can I get these lights from?" Yes, for sure. Oh. At the beginning, we struggled. We were new in the market, and uh, some of these people, electricity was a new thing. Changing mindsets is a bit difficult. But at the moment, there are people who come from far and wide in Kenya asking for their products. And what about the environmental benefits? Uh, it, it, it's huge. Uh, in the past uh, five years, we have recharged about 250,000 uh, batteries. Uh, so it means you're saving, the, you're saving the world from a lot of CO2, CO2 emissions. It is quite uh, uh, satisfying uh, to see that uh, you can change lives just using light. Fish like electric light? Um, they like light. It's not, they're not, they're not, not too fussy. They're not, not too fussy. <laughs> How long do they last for? Yeah, this one. Yeah. They, when we use them, we use them normally from this time up to morning. They go up to morning throughout the night. So the guys have dropped a, a, a kind of an anchor in the water. They've lashed the lights to that anchor. And each one of those lights is attracting fish to it. And they're going to put the nets around each light in turn. 
Around 180 fishing crews are now using solar every night, supplied by three hubs. With five more being built, Oscar hopes many more fishing boats will turn solar. Anything? A lot. Yeah? A lot. Can we see? Yeah. These are the freshwater sardines that, uh, that, that they actually make a living from. Uh, and they can keep going through the night and get these in large quantities. It demonstrates that those solar panelled lights are doing the job just as effectively as kerosene. We've seen how solar lighting can replace other dirtier forms of off-grid lighting, such as kerosene. It's cheaper, cleaner and more sustainable. If you get the business models right, it can be profitable. So it could change the lives of millions and the environment for the better.